This edition of My Thoughts Monday is brought to you by Valve Performance, the team behind the Nordboard, Four Stacks, the Groin Bar, and Human Track. Guys, the most important ability for all of our athletes is availability, and that's the absolute goal of Valve Performance, is to provide solutions to performance professionals so that we can get the right information to make the right decision at the right time for the betterment of the athletes that we get to work with. To do this, guys, they have a wide range of validated products that focus on usability, and having been founded by the School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences at the Queensland University of Technology, they're extremely evidence-based and they're beyond transparent. I can tell you that our time using the Nordboard and being involved with Forstex, we have been introduced to so many amazing people that have truly helped us become better coaches, have a better understanding, not just of the technology, but also what we're doing with our athletes. So make sure you hop over to ValPerformance.com today to make sure you check out what they got. It's going to make you better and to do better by your athletes. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some awesome practitioners who are always trying to evolve and continue to grow professionally throughout their career. The problem with many of us, though, is finding a new outlet, a new way and a new perspective on the questions that we may have whether it be programming, whether it be situational with dealing with coaches, or whether it be career advice. Because all too often what happens is we get stuck in with the same group of friends and the same group of colleagues that we reach out to for advice repeatedly over and over again. But what we should really be looking for is different perspectives, different people who have been through different situations who can help us make better decisions both for ourselves and our athletes. And one awesome place to start with that is the forums in the Strength Coach Network. In the forums in the Strength Coach Network, you'll be able to reach out and get feedback, input, and advice from coaches from all over the world, from everything, from career advice to training modalities to programming. There's people there just for the same reason as you are, to try to get better, to learn, to share information, and to grow the field of strength and conditioning. So hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps. That's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash cvasps to dive into all that great content today and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jay DeMeo coming at you with this week's edition of My Thoughts Monday. And today, I would like to continue talking a little bit about some takeaways that I had from Free Vasps, or at least some things that I really had resonate with me, and, and you know, some, some things that I took home and, and thought, you know, how we can be better. Uh, today... I would like to talk about Katie Jones' awesome talk. Uh, first and foremost, bat and lead off, um, she crushed it. It was awesome. And I think her unique perspective when it comes to training athletes, being a former sports medicine practitioner um, into strength and conditioning is, is one thing that makes her unique, but also going from high-level soccer with MLS up at the Philadelphia Union and then down into college basketball is another unique perspective. And I think, you know, some things that she talked about, not just were unique, but I thought were absolutely brilliant. And one thing that she talked about was how she is the person that's really responsible when it comes to manipulating, you know, monotony and strain curves when you're looking at the training of the athletes or, you know, how she impacts the acute, excuse me, the chronic uh, ratios. Or how she, you know, is the person that really impacts their acute to chronic workloads when you're looking at practice. And I think that this is absolutely brilliant for two reasons. One, I, and I've said this before, but I always feel like if there's a way for us in the performance realm to be the people to pull or push or do whatever so that the sport coaches have less that they have to deal with when it comes to having to manipulate their plan, I think that's priceless. I think that's super important because, again, if the goal is to keep the goal the goal, as we've talked about in Dan John said maybe 15 years ago now, um, the goal is to win. And to win, you have to work on your skill. You have to get better at the technical, tactical aspects of the game. So if we need to do less or more prior to in the weight room or prior to in warm-up or whatever it may be that we're involved in, 
then that's what we need to do to make sure that we are continuing to progress down the path that we need to progress now. So hearing how she did that and how she, you know, put different aspects into practice and individuals and like where those progressions started and went to and the importance of all of that, I thought that was sensational. And I, you know, selfishly, you know, and, and I've said this before, like I don't like to hear um, confirmation bias, but it was nice to hear that someone who's working with one of the best programs in the country is looking at it similarly to how I do. Um, but also, at the same time, being challenged to maybe do more when it comes to individual instruction and warm-up before practice and things of that nature, where I haven't been as involved and I can do more and, and looking at how she has these different progressions and how they work and what their objectives are was really, really cool to me. And I think that that's going to be a huge benefit, not just to me, but to my guys as we move forward. I think that that's really going to impact how we do these things. The second reason I think that that's so important is because of where we are at right now. This pandemic and, and all of these return to sports situations are obviously, it's, it's something we've never seen. It's something we've never understood. It's something that hopefully we will, in, in our lifetimes, we will never have to go through again. But what it's making me understand is we need to make sure that they're prepared for sport coming back. We need to do our best that we can. We need to be able to trust the kids to do what they need to do. But then when they come back, Depending on how your procedures and plans go, we then need to be very, very flexible with pulling back and, and taking a step aside or contributing our work in a unique or different field. Um, we love to talk about how strength and conditioning coaches are, or we are all like the, the, the servant mindset, right? We're the servant leaders, we like to say. But we now have the opportunity to really serve our athletes and our coaches at a higher level. And that's going to be through a multitude of things, right? It's going to be through education, like how we can do better so that they understand why these progressions go on, why we need to move certain ways um, when it comes to increasing intensities and volumes and things of that nature. So that, you know, because we've never had this break, right? Like, especially basketball. We've never had this break. So understanding like why we may want to back it down a little bit to start or why we may want to just do some fitness things for a while to start and, and build up that way or whatever your plan may be. But if we're really serving both of them, what we really might have to do to be best for all of them is, is almost step back and say, okay, how can we do things to get better in the least amount of work possible, like the whole minimal effective dose that so many people love to talk about, but how can we now really focus on this and, and back away? Because one thing people are really concerned about, right, is, well, coaches are going to go and, and they're going to want to do this, that, and the third with all these high volume, high intensity and all this. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case. No one wants to be the person that, that goes too far too fast and ends out on the front page of ESPN. Right, no one, and and you know we all don't want that to happen to anybody. But it is fair to say that if we do have limited hours, the coaches are probably going to want more of those. And I don't think this is the time to fight. I think this is the time to to listen to a coach like Katie Jones, who's been super successful at super high levels, and find ways that we can do what we need to do within these confinements while still paying attention to the loads and making sure that we're not the ones spiking them too high or we're not the ones making it too monotonous, right? That we're the ones adding some variation but being precise with our programming and making sure that it's like we have specific boxes we need to tick as we move forward and day one, we're going to tick them. And if we don't, we're going to find a way to make sure we tick them on day two. And day two, if we tick those boxes, we're going to take another step and we're going to tick these boxes that are next. And we're going to add a little more 
or do something a little bigger or do something a little harder or do something a little faster or do a little more of whatever it was and move that way. But I think that right now, there are so many people that are so afraid of what their preparation level is going to be. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? When really, we should be looking more as how can we support what these young people need to do to be successful for the coaches that we're trying to, to assist. And unfortunately for us, there's going to be a times right now where I think that that is actually going to be to, to take a step back and, and get out of the way and not fight for the weight room. Because if we do care about what's best for the kids, sometimes what we need to do is make sure that they're just best prepared to practice. And that might mean that we just back away for a day. Listen, there's nobody that loves having his team in the weight room more than I do. Nobody. There's nobody that is more excited to get his group of guys back on campus than I am. Nobody. But is the first day getting in the weight room going to be the best thing? I don't know. Is the first day going through some of the running and conditioning and work that they're supposed to be doing at home is going to be the best thing? I don't know. But what I do know is I know what that first practice is probably going to look like. So maybe we should make sure that they get through that see how they come back, start building, and start looking at our workloads, whether it be subjective or objective, and start to perform our contributions based on whatever those ceilings and those basement workloads are. From there, just make sure we're doing what's best for the kids. Because at this point, if we're doing what's best for the kids, chances are we're serving the coaching staff best, and we're going to get the most out of everybody that we need to make sure that not only these young people are physically prepared for what we're asking them to do, but they're also developing and getting better like we want them to. So Katie, mad props. That was a rad presentation and it really made me think. And some of your principles and, and, and ideas in there are going to be a driver to the conversations I'm going to have with my sports medicine practitioner about finding more efficient ways to load these kids right now. Because the other thing we don't want to, right, is them coming in and out and back and forth, especially as we start moving through these different phases of return to sport. So kudos, Katie. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Would love to hear what y'all took from these talks, too, if you were able to catch them. Would love to hear your thoughts and how you're implementing some of these you know, ideas as well. So leave those below. And as always, truly appreciate everything y'all do for us here at Central Virginia Sport Performance. We'll be back next week with another My Thoughts Monday. I will see you then.